Hi, um, I'm Alexa Pfeiffer, and today I'll be talking about the Chihuahuan Desert. It is the largest desert in North America. It extends from the southern United States into Mexico. Um, it's bordered by the Sierra Madre Oriental and the Sierra Madre Occidental. Um, it is a high elevation desert. It ranges from 3,000 to 5,000 feet on average above sea level. And in general, it experiences hot summers and cold, dry winters. This desert has a wide variety of ecosystems and environments. Um, it includes desert scrublands, woodlands, grasslands, and also montane environments. It has 3,500 3, plant species, 1,000 of which are only found in this region. Um, so those are the endemic species. And being endemic to a region is being only found in that region. And so this desert has a high amount of endemicism. Um, these species can vary from valley to valley, can vary from valley to valley. Um, and a lot of the environments in this desert are highly localized to these areas. Um, so gypsum outcrops, saline playas, freshwater springs and streams, they lead to a lot of unique species that specialize, that are specialized for those environments. Um, this includes sky islands, which are isolated mountain environments. And scrublands, however, are the most widely found environment in this desert, um, as you can see here. A lot of these species are very endemic. So for example, um, Cuatro Cienegas is home to the only aquatic box turtle species and the only known fish that has two interbreeding morphs that like eat different like things and they have like different jaws. It's, it's very interesting. It's very cool. Um, and unfortunately, some of these species have also ceased to exist um, or are thought to be extinct. So the largest woodpecker in the world um, is the imperial woodpecker, and that was last seen here in the 1950s. And unfortunately, because of a lot of the deforestation of the woodlands in the desert, um, it is highly unlikely that these woodpeckers will be found again. Um, this video that I have is the only known footage of this bird. So it's a very tragic loss. And it's related to the ivory billed woodpecker. Fun fact. <laughs> Unfortunately, because it is a desert, there are a lot of concerns with the water. And so being a desert, it already has a low um, supply of water. And unfortunately, it rains only from July to October, because, largely due to monsoonal rains, um, because the mountains on either side of the desert block a lot of the incoming precipitation from the, uh, the oceans on either side. Um, however, the Rio Grande snowmelt from these mountains and freshwater springs and streams are sources of fresh water for this region. However, because of overgrazing, agriculture, and further land development, the water supply in this region has been severely threatened. And agriculture is a significant industry in this region. So until efforts um, are, well, efforts are currently being um, done to help mitigate the amount of water supply that the farmers need. Um, and so they've been like developing ways to be very efficient with the water that they do get. Um, there are a lot of Native American populations in this region. Um, the most well-known group is the Raramuri. Um, there are a lot more. Um, however, Mexico doesn't federally recognize American Native American lands, so it's difficult to list all of them. So throughout the history of this region, um, humans have been able to adapt to the variety of climates found here. Um, so thousands and thousands of, of years ago, um, 
the region had more abundant water sources from a lot of lakes and streams that crosscut the, the environment. Um, and this eventually became more of a grassland environment. Um, however, by like 1900, a lot of the European settlers that have or that had come in um, overgrazed the land, and so a lot of these grasslands um, have changed into what we know the desert as today. And there were a lot of droughts too, which didn't help. However, Native American groups throughout this entire time were able to continue to adapt to the changing conditions. Um, they used more permanent adobe structures to um, build their homes, and they relied on agriculture, so usually using the valley floors. Um, they also used uh, native plants and animals to supplement their diet. Their settlements were typically around water sources, so alluvial plains, foothills, and other places where water could be more easily controlled for like irrigation. Um, they also used a lot of ceramics um, that were traded with other groups of Native Americans. However, unfortunately, due to um, everything that's happened since then, a lot of these groups have been displaced, displaced decimated, uh, and or assimilated. So we've had a lot of loss. However, the Rarangari, um have been able to generally keep their culture um, because of how remote they live. They live in the Sierra Madre Occidental and they usually practice small-scale agriculture. So using main, maize, beans, squash um, on like whatever land they are able to use for agriculture because it is a very harsh environment. Um, they are known for their endurance and mining skills because of um, because they've had to adapt to these very mountainous terrains and um, the long distances that they have to go to get to different resources. Um, and also, running is held in high regard spiritually and socially in their society. So, typically, activities in their culture include persistence hunting. So hunting game for several days, um, usually just continuously walking until the, the animal gets tired. Um, they also have uh, races that are similar to ultra marathons. However, unfortunately, they are often exploited for marketing um, strategies. So for shoes, energy bars, etc. And also they're often um, coerced into helping with drug traffickers because the uh, Chihuahuan Desert is such a harsh environment and there are a lot of easy hiding places for people running from the law. Um, so unfortunately, they often get caught up in that. Um, they also hold dancing in high esteem. So their dances um, are also a test of endurance. They last like 12 to 24 hours, some even as long as 30 hours. Um, and they have like this very light footwear um, that's historically made out of yucca fibers or animal hides. And so this great, this place has such a large amount of biodiversity. However, um, it faces a lot of threats. Um, and fortunately there are a lot of international groups that are working with local governments and um, more regional and federal governments to help protect what is left of this desert and what, um, what resources the desert has. So um, developing better agriculture techniques, um, better conservation laws, etc., cetera, um, can all help this region. Um, and hopefully save what is left of it. Thank you so much for watching.